Hello, Unconventionalist Lydia here. How are you doing today? I wanted to uh, jump on very quickly to film your quick video and start a conversation around uh, the topic today of fear. Uh, and one of the things that I really uh, found out about myself that I was quite fearful about uh, in the last couple of weeks of uh, pitching for a project um, in Singapore, which is totally... Um, you know, out of my comfort zone. It is totally something that makes me shake in my own booties. And sometimes uh, I think makes me question uh, whether or not I'm meant to do something or not. And I'm sure you guys experience something like that, because I think any time that we have a major shift happening in our life or we're, we're transitioning uh, through change, uh, fear is going to come on the backseat, right? It's inevitable. Uh, it comes along for the ride, whether you like it or not. Uh, and I know myself from, you know, even the last five years of being an entrepreneur, it, you know, fear still exists. I still get very scared about things that I think I want to do and, and, and maybe not think I'm capable of doing. So it's really... Um, probably a very same state that you guys are in, whether it's change that you're feeling about leaving a job, uh, leaving a career that you've invested a lot of, a lot of time in, uh, or simply just showing up and actually doing something that is of yours that's never been done before and that scares the living shit out of you. Um, and that's cool because, you know, that's sort of what change is about. And when you're not shaking in your booties, when you're not um, afraid of the unknown, um, you're not really changing and you're not really going somewhere or feeling something or experiencing something um, that is something new, right? If that's what you're looking for, something new to change in your life, well, our behaviors, our environments, the people, the circumstances have to, in a way, change with it. So I kind of want to start by telling you a bit of a story of my own fear that I faced in the last probably, I guess, a month of actually pitching for this project. So I was approached by a very, very large um, financial uh, company in Singapore uh, where I've been coaching some of the employees, um, you know, quite ironic, right? Screw the cubicle, going back into the cubicle <laughs> to coach employees. Um, but I said yes to the coaching of the employees because uh, it still resonated with the mission that I uh, felt that I, my work represented, which was to create more joy and happiness with careers and, and, and help people find work that they love. And as long as the objectives are still that, uh, I felt that it was still ethically sound to continue that. Um, and then I was offered a, uh, a project to pitch for, which was a really big sort of uh, corporate culture, corporate team um, strategy uh, related um, uh, workshops that is something that I haven't done for many, many, many years, even back in the day in my early 20s when I used to work for a uh, corporate training company. Um, that was really the time that I've done it. And, and most of my work has been with individuals, obviously, with my business. Um, and this was really unknown territory. But also, in a way, I felt resistance towards uh, even pitching for this project because part of me did feel that I was, in a way, selling my soul to a, corpor a, corporation, a corporate entity uh, that may not allow me to really teach and share the things that I care about and that I would be stifled into a role. And just the idea of going into an office and going into the corporate, um, you know, the process of getting getting hired or, or, or getting, um, you know, through procurement and all the sort of nitty gritty SOP, right, that they do in corporate just absolutely left a bitter taste in my mouth. And so initially, my first thought was, yeah, that's not for me and I'm not going to go for it. Um, and I had to really ask myself this question. And this is a question that I always ask myself whenever I'm truly afraid to do something and I want to discern uh, whether or not this thing that I'm afraid to do is truly something that I don't want to do and that is, is not even about fears, about just wow, this thing is not for me? Or is it a fear that I've created in my own mind in order to resist and, and avoid something that I may not know a lot about, but actually deep down, I wanted to explore it, right? Um, so the question I always ask is this. If I pretended I was in a bit of a video game, right? So I have nine lives, I can always re-begin again. Or I would say to myself, uh, if you had some sort of, you know, if you were, you were some sort of invincible person where nothing you do can go wrong, people wouldn't judge you, you wouldn't fuck up, uh, it would all work out, would you want to pursue this opportunity? 
even if it ended up going nowhere. But the idea of seeing it complete or seeing it through, does that bring you a sense of fulfillment in some capacity um, or at least a sense of less regret about not knowing uh, if you actually went towards it and pursued it? So that was sort of the question I asked. And I said, well, if I could know for sure whether I would enjoy this work and whether or not I would be stifled, whether or not I would be sort of silent about how I would approach things and I have to conform, does that, is that truly going to happen? In a, in a way, I didn't know. I was making it up. I was making up all the trauma that I experienced from my own corporate life and saying, well, this might be what I'm going back into again, so I better say no right now. Uh, but in the truth of it all, in the logical truth, I actually don't know that that will repeat itself. And also, so the challenge here is, is not about being dictated what to do, but this is actually an opportunity for me to create boundaries around my work, to actually proudly say, this is how I would approach this problem. Here's my style. Here is my you know, point of view around the future of work. And if they don't agree with it, they wouldn't hire me. And if they do, I would be actually really shifting um, how things are being done in corporate. And that's exciting. And that's the whole point of, I think, Screw the Cubicle being in, in the future of work is to involve that or, or sorry, evolve that with them. Um, and does it have to stick with just entrepreneurs? Does it have to, I had to question myself and the values that my company stood for um, was that it has always been about startups, always been about grassroots entrepreneurs for the longest time. And now it's sort of a shift of direction of people who actually do want to work for other people, but having a much more joyful experience or having healthier communication in the workplace, it seemed to actually, you know, could merge into that. So with this fear, I'm so glad that I went to pitch and we don't know what is going to happen, obviously, with uh, getting accepted or not. But I felt a sense of relief after I actually sent that email through because it felt like I was able to answer that question for myself. Where else would Screw the Cubicle expand to? Where else would I expand to that is actually different from the work that I've been doing for the last five years? And to be honest, in the last five years, my work has changed probably about eight times. Uh, they've They've you know, held in that, that realm of um, what I cared about, but actually how I delivered value absolutely shifted as I grew as a person and which resulted to my business growing as well. And this was, again, another opportunity for me to grow into a different realm that may or may not be the ideal realm for me. Uh, but to say no to an opportunity because I was afraid of it um, illogically um, would absolutely make me feel like I would be thinking about it, you know, for the rest of my life, the what if. And I think that is so much more painful sometimes uh, than actually knowing and going through with something, completing, seeing something through, and then making a conscious decision to say, you know what, that wasn't for me. But I went and saw it through, so I know for sure I can put it to bed, I can put it to rest, I can move on again to another idea or move on again to another project. Um, and so I think that fear um, absolutely has um, reason to be around you. You know, fear can sometimes actually not be a, oh my God, you're going to die and you need to leave the circumstance sort of fear because very likely most of us are not in those sort of urgent circumstances where we're afraid for our lives all the time. But when fear creeps up with anything that we're doing, when it comes to showing up in the world, launching a business, quitting my job, telling my spouse, whatever that fear is, it can actually activate the same sort of feeling that actually does feel like it would lead to death. You know, it's the same sort of urgency, unfortunately with fear. And so it's our job to really try to commit to parenting ourselves and trying to discern the fear and really understand that is this true, this fear really truly a fear that I need to watch out for? Or is it fear that I have manifested in order to not do the thing that I'm afraid to do? Right. So that was sort of the video game analogy or the sort of invisible cloak or, you know, the, the I can do no wrong cloak where I put it on and I go, Will I want to do this if I could do no wrong? Because then if I say yes, then it's what I'm afraid of is not the opportunity. What I'm afraid of is the judgment. I'm afraid of failing. I might be afraid of success. And that is something I need to explore a little bit more and understand versus actually saying that opportunity isn't for me just because it feels difficult or it feels uh, like something I've never done before. So... I would like you to think about your fears and almost use the same sort of video game, uh, you know, invisible cloak analogy is that, you know, picture yourself saying yes to the thing that you're most afraid of and saying yes, knowing that you wouldn't make any mistakes 
knowing that you would, could do no wrong, that you would get no judgment, and that you would never fuck up. Would you want to do the same? And that is a much more truthful yes or no that's going to come from you versus the stories I think that you could potentially make up in your head to prevent you from actually doing something bigger with your life. So I would love for you to share what is your biggest fear that has been looming in that back seat that you've been sort of dragging along with you. Um, and put on that invisible cloak, you know, put on that video game hat and go, I've got nine lives, I can't fuck up. Do what I want to pursue this project or want to pursue this dream or whatever it is that you want. Um, and let that fear tell you what it's truly afraid of, right? If it's not the opportunity, what are you believing could happen to you as a, an outcome, as a ripple effect of when you do this, this could happen to you, people could not love you anymore, or people could sort of uh, not trust you in your decisions in your life. You know, what are those things that you think would happen as a ripple effect of pursuing the thing that you're afraid of doing, but actually really, really want? I would love for you to share with us, be transparent. This is a safe place for us to sort of help each other with understanding our fears and um, creating the bravery that we require to move forward. But we do have to understand ourselves first and understand what's preventing us from taking the those leaps um, and doing it in a nurturing way, doing it in a loving and compassionate way to ourselves. Uh, as we would with a child, we would never say, oh, you're scared of that? Why are you scared of that? We would actually ask the child, um, well, what's wrong? What do you see? How do you feel? You know, what is there something under the bed, right? You wouldn't this, this, uh, you, you would acknowledge the child, right, for what it sees and what it feels because it's true to him or her. And then you would sort of work on going, well, I'm here. I'm here for you. Um, you know, there's nothing to be afraid of. Or we'll put on this night lamp to make you feel better, but we're still going to sleep through the night, right? You're not going to avoid that, that child going through life either, but you'll make it more easy, more comfortable for them. So in a way, sometimes we have to treat ourselves a bit like children to parent ourselves to say, it's okay to have that fear, but let's talk about it. Let's talk about what is truly the thing you're afraid of so that we can actually recognize that and start, um, understanding what we can do in small steps, uh, small moments of time where we dedicate to unraveling what we, uh, you know, the, the, the core things beyond that fear um, and figuring out on a logical level how we can prevent ourselves from feeling so anxious and stressed out about it all, right? And if you share it with, with us, we can really help you see things with different perspective. I know I absolutely see things, need to see things a lot of the times outside of the feelings I have sometimes because the feelings can fuck you <laughs> in a way, you know, it's not always... The right feelings because we've generated feelings based on conditionings and based on what we believe is true uh, and everything is true all the time so we sort of have to focus learn how to focus our feelings and emotions and discern what emotions are truly helping us get to where we need to go or what's hindering us and 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 help it play nice with each other right help our different parts of ourselves that is fearful and the ones that wants to be courageous uh, to understand each other a bit more and I think um that's one of the key ways to really look and discern your fear efficiently uh, to be able to keep, go for it with your dreams. So I hope you share with me and thank you so much for watching today. Um, and let me know if you have any questions, something you want to share, something you would like for me to, um, you know, start to discern for you as well. We can lay it on the table and look at your fears together. Um, treat it as a game, you know, of what we can see that's happening uh, of alternative possibilities for you that maybe you haven't seen because you've been so suffocated by that fear. Uh, and I hope that you're able to uh, open that, that trust with me and, and the group here in order to share that story for yourself. Thanks very much for joining me and I'll see you later in the group.